Welcome to the Remnant Perspective Broadcast with Pastor John English. Please stay tuned to the end of the broadcast for more contact information. And now, your host, Pastor English. What has God done for me? He redeemed your life from destruction. Yes. Is anybody here in this tonight? Yes. And sometimes I think we've got to just remember what God did yes. Amen. and give Him praise for it. Lift your hands all over this building. And begin to thank God. Begin to thank God that you're not who you used to be. Begin to thank God for what He's done in your life. Hallelujah. But open up your mouth and begin to give God praise in this building. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you, Father God, that we're not who we were before. But we've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody says amen. Give the Lord a big round of applause one more time. And I want you to turn around and find about three people. Hug their neck. Three people. Come on, get out from where you are. Go find three different people. All right, make it four. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Man, I feel the Lord. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. before the Lord. Somebody say amen. Take your Bibles out and turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter number 5. Um, I'm going to preach a few minutes tonight on something that is burning in my heart. You know, last Wednesday, how many of you ready to hear the word of the Lord say amen? Shake off what happened today. Shake off what you're going through tonight. Quit worrying about tomorrow. Let God do something in your life right now. Amen. Something that's burning, has been burning in my heart. Last Wednesday night, we, we dealt with spiritual plateaus. 
And if you'll remember, we were in the book of Acts. How many of you are still reading in the book of Acts? Say amen. How many of you are still praying over the prayer focus? Say amen. We've been reading in the book of Acts, and last Wednesday night we were in the book of Acts. We dealt with how that the disciples, when they saw Jesus ascend into heaven, that at that moment in time they had reached their greatest place. They had seen Jesus. They had heard him preach. They had heard the word preach the word. They had watched him work miracles. I don't know about anybody else, but if I was, was, was them, it might, I might have felt like I had gone just as far as I was ever going to go. I would have felt like that it could never get any better than it was at that moment. After all that I had seen, after all that they had heard, after what they had witnessed, after what they had felt, being in his presence, the temptation must have been to think that this was everything there was. But Jesus tells them before he goes to the cross, he says, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. Come on. Acts chapter 1 is where we were. Jesus, don't go there now. Jesus said to them, but you're going to receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you're going to be my witnesses. A promise that things are going to get better. Come on. And then Acts chapter 2, we know the promise was fulfilled. The Bible said that the Holy Ghost fell upon them in the upper room. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They all spake in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. How many of you remember what I'm talking about? Say amen. And I dealt with last Wednesday night spiritual plateaus going from where you've been to where God wants you to be. And how long has it been since you have felt a genuine touch of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now tonight, I've got something else. This is going to be the title. I, I don't know necessarily just how it's going to work out, but I believe it's going to work out. Listen to this. Amazed or offended? Say it with me. Amazed or offended? And what I want to deal with tonight is, what does the world, what do people see in you? When it comes to your walk with Christ. Now I want you to get that. What do people see in you when it comes to your walk with Christ? Bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love and mercy. I thank you for your grace. Lord, for the next few moments, I pray, God, that you would let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon this building. In such a way, Father God, that you would press upon our hearts. I'm asking, Father God, now that you would take the one that is uninterested tonight, and Father God, that you would make them interested. I pray, God, that the touch of the Holy Spirit would rest upon each and every one of us. Anoint my lips of clay. Give me words to say that come straight from heaven. Lord, I'm asking you this in the name of Jesus, and everybody says amen. Matthew chapter number 5, with your other hand, turn over to the book of Acts chapter number 13. We're going to end up in the book of Acts. But I want to ask tonight, what do people see in you when it comes to your walk with Christ? I believe tonight, let, let me go ahead and read this verse or I'll talk forever. How many of you know that's true? Say amen. Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light Unto all that are in the house, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, how many of you would agree with me that, that it's very clear that we are to be the salt of the earth? Now, salt, if you put it on the right thing, it's going to be amazing. Follow me. 
Just help me preach, even if you're not understanding right now. Say amen. Salt, when you put it on the right thing in the right measure, it's going to be amazing. Light, when you shine it into the darkness, is going to be offensive. Hear that. Now turn over to the book of John, chapter number 1. I'm going to prove that to you real quick, and then we're going to go. John chapter number 1. All right? How many of you know we're the light of the world? Say amen. John chapter, I can't find John. There it is. John chapter 1, let, let's just begin to read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And I want you to really truly understand that when light, they, they don't love the light because it exposed their evil deeds. Get what I'm saying? Salt can be amazing, but light can be offensive. Light, when it shines into the darkness, will offend those that sit in darkness. Come on. Because they don't want their evil deeds exposed. Let me say today that, that I believe that in the world that we're living in right now, one of the problems we have is there's not enough salt and there's not enough light. Christianity, in many ways, we have lost the fact that we are to be salt and light. That our testimony of Christ in us, I said Christ in us, should be amazing. And it should be offensive. And we're going to get there in a minute, but you've got to hear this. Because what we've allowed to happen in the church today is we are too busy thinking about ourselves. We're too busy just going through the motions. We're too busy getting through this life. We're too busy going about our business. But God declared to us that we are to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That truly our walk with God should be. Amazing and offensive. Now go now to the book of Acts chapter number 13. And, and this is, man, I, I've read this several times in the book of Acts. I've seen this. It's, it spoke to my heart several times. And I want you now to look over at the book, uh, I mean, chapter number 13, verse number 8. All right? Everybody say verse number 8. And we're going to read here. Of just what God's beginning to do in this 13th chapter. Verse number 8. It, it talks about, let, let's go down to verse number 9. It talks about a sorcerer. A sorcerer that was, how many of you remember reading this? Come on somebody. I think this was last night's reading. It dealt with a sorcerer that was going around. And we pick it up in verse number 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now, now you got to hear it. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately, everybody say that word with me, immediately, and immediately, listen what the word says, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went out about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, and I want you to, to notice here, that, that Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, did not just simply coast through this life, not making an impact on anybody that was around him. Is anybody hearing this? 
You say, well, that was Saul. That was Paul. That was the great man of God that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. That was, he, he's different. I'm not like him. How many of you know that we're all a part of the family of God? If you come to the foot of the cross, you've been washed in the same blood that Saul was washed in on the road to Damascus. Are you hearing this? And it doesn't matter whether or not you've got a pulpit ministry or whether or not you are a singer on the platform or you're a teacher in the church. How many of you truly do believe that if we're going to model that which we see in Scripture, we must come to the understanding that our life should be making an impact on somebody around us? Again, that's what's wrong with the church today. We're too busy doing what we want to do. We're too busy going about our business just trying to make it through this life. And we've missed the boat that God has instilled within us, the children of God, the ones that have been to the foot of the cross, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, the ones who are filled with the mighty anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are to be the salt and the light. Now, we live in a day when nobody wants to see the light. Come on, somebody. The light is offensive, but the salt is amazing. Now, what I want to point out here is if this were to be many Christians today, and if they were to come into contact with this sorcerer, How many do you believe today would have the power, the anointing, or the courage to do what Paul did? He turned and looked at that evil one. He turned and looked at that child of the devil, and he rebuked him openly. And then, because of the anointing, because of the gift of the Holy Ghost, there the Bible made it very clear in verse number 9, Saul, uh, who is also called Paul, being filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him. Can I tell you tonight that it is the power of the Holy Spirit that sets us apart from every other believer. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the power of the blood. It is the power of the cross that gives us authority over the evil world of the adversary. So why is this world in such bad shape? Because there's not enough of the church that's being offensive. We're going to get there in a minute. Somebody say amen. He said, "You, you child of the devil, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. The power of the Holy Ghost rested upon Paul in such a way that he was light in the darkness. And I will tell you that your testimony, your walk with God, what God does in and through you can be amazing to some and offensive to others. We're going to get there in a minute. Let me, let me hurry up and read. Verse number 12, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. We go through and we read, and Paul begins to preach. How many of you know he's a long-winded preacher? Later on, you're going to get to the part where he's preaching all night, and a young man sitting in the window sill falls asleep, and he falls out of the window and hits the ground below and dies. Thank God that's never happened in this church. Come on, somebody. That's why we don't have a second story. But he (laughs) fell down and died, and Paul had to stop preaching to go back down there and raise him from the dead. Does anybody see what I'm saying? But we'll drag into church and drag back out. We're so busy. We're so wondering. I wonder if the royals are winning tonight. Come on, somebody. When God put us here to be salt and light. Y'all help me. All right. Paul begins to preach and proclaim. uh, Look look at verse number 42 now. 
He begins to preach and proclaim, and in verse number 42, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. It stirred up a desire. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Now, look at verse number 44. I love this. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Now, now we've just read two different accounts when Paul spoke to that man and a mist came upon him and all of a sudden the power of God was revealed in the, the sorcerer. The deputy seeing it was astonished at what he saw. He was astonished at the word of the Lord. Then we find Paul preaching and proclaiming under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And guess what? The next Sunday, the whole church, the whole city showed up to hear what he had to say say all right came almost the whole city together to hear the word of god but when the jews saw the multitude they were filled with envy Paul, his testimony, his walk with god the anointing that rested upon him was amazing to some but it was offensive to others. Now we live in a world where we feel like we've got to make everybody feel good. Where we've got to condone everybody's behavior. Where we cannot get up and speak our convictions. It's funny that we live in a nation that is supposed to be free to worship, but we are, the church is the one that is being persecuted for what we believe. And the enemy, the adversary, has brought us to a place. He has pushed us into a corner where we're afraid to stand up and proclaim what thus saith the Lord. We're afraid to stand up and say what God says. Come on, somebody, and hear what I'm saying. Let me tell you tonight, don't forget that the church is to be salt and we are to be light. Salt is amazing, but light is offensive to those that sit in darkness. When you look at Paul, when you begin to look at all the works that the apostles did, when you find them working a miracle, the Bible will tell there was somebody that saw it and they were astonished. That they greatly wondered in amazement at the power of God that rested upon them. We watch them as they come to Christ, as the whole city comes to hear the word. We watch as 3,000 were added to the church. We watch as they stood and cried out and said, what must we do to be saved? In other words, what they saw was amazing. What they saw drew them. It was something that drew them to the foot of the cross. But hear me, when you go through the book of Acts, you'll begin to find that there were those who got offended. Uh, Verse number 45, usually it's either the devil or the religious folks that get offended when the light's turned on. You know, the sinner doesn't usually get offended because they're ready to get out of their sin. Come on, somebody. That's why they'll come to the altar. That's why the drug addicts will come and lay their drugs on the altar. That's why they'll come and repent before the Lord. Why? Because the light exposed the darkness in their heart. And they, they, they heard the gospel and they came willingly to receive that which God had laid before them. But usually if somebody's going to get offended, it's either going to be the devil or the religious folks. Come on, somebody. Because that's what the Bible says here in verse number 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. In the face of persecution, they waxed bold. 
They didn't go home and twiddle their thumbs. They didn't worry about what the Jews had said. They didn't wonder what was going to happen to them. They weren't worried about whether or not they were going to be put into prison or if they were going to chase them out of town. My Bible tells me they were salt and they were light. They were being used by God to draw the masses in. And yes, the enemy and the religious, they were offended, but they waxed bold in the face of persecution. They proclaimed with boldness the word of God with the power of the Holy Ghost at work in their hearts. Somebody say amen. They waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing that you put it far from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light. Of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. They were amazed at the work of God. They were amazed at the salt of the earth. They rejoiced at what God had done for them. They had witnessed the power of the Holy Ghost. They were astonished at the Word of God. They were pricked in their heart. And the Bible says, and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the Word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. The Word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Paul, in his testimony, and what God did through him in his daily life, was amazing. It made people stand up and notice that there must be a God in heaven. Come on, somebody. It made, his walk with God made people notice that there must be a God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But look now at the next verse. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask you tonight, just very quickly, when it comes to your walk with God, when it comes to your testimony, do people look at you and are they amazed at what God is doing? Think about this. We come to church and we go back home and we try to make it through life. But do we have the power of the Holy Ghost? In us to a point that it's going to make someone be astonished at what God is doing. Oh, we come in, we go out, we say our prayers, we sing our songs. But when's the last time that somebody looked at you and saw the anointing of the Holy Ghost? When's the last time that you stood as a light in the darkness? We come, again, let me say it, we come in, we go out, we stay the same, we get to the point to where we've received and we're glad. But as we look at the apostles, as we look at at them as they continue to do the work of the Lord, we will find that everywhere they went, their life was a testimony. Their life was amazing. Thank you for listening in today to the Remnant Perspective broadcast with Pastor John English. You may send letters of prayerful and financial support to P.O. Box 1545, Springfield, Missouri 65801-1545. If you are in need of prayer or would like to contact the ministry, call us at 417-861-4838. That's 417-861-4838. You can also visit the ministry website at GallowayFullGospel.com. That's Galloway Full Gospel dot com or email us at Galloway Full Gospel Video at Gmail dot com. Don't forget to go to your app store or iTunes to get our free app. Be sure to tune in next week for another broadcast from Remnant Perspective.